This video is going to be shorter, but really cool. Today we're going to hear how the Apostle Paul became the answer to a prayer in the Old Testament. This channel's focus is how the New Testament connects perfectly to the Old, and this is no exception. First, we have to generally talk about the time of Noah. We all know the story of Noah. Mankind had become so wicked that God was sorry that he made human beings at all. So God decided to start again with a righteous man, Noah, and his family in order to refill the earth with faithful followers of God. But we all know that sin came off the ark through Noah's family and humanity rebelled against God. We just did a video detailing how Nimrod became the leader of the earth and led mankind away from God. We will get more in depth with the subject when we analyze the table of nations. But just know that the great flood did not wipe out disobedience of God, and Noah himself knew it. We jump into the story here about when the Tower of Babel was happening. This is Noah giving an end-of-life blessing to his sons. Then he said, Cursed be Canaan, a servant of servants he shall be to his brethren. And he said, Blessed be the Lord, the God of Shem, and may Canaan be his servant. May God enlarge Japheth, and may he dwell in the tents of Shem, and may Canaan be a servant. And Noah lived after the flood 350 years, so all the days of Noah were 950 years, and he died. We've already interpreted this passage in our video about Noah and his evil son Ham. Note that Ham is not mentioned here in this passage. This would also be a good video to watch to see what Ham did that was so evil that he was disowned by his family to understand why he wasn't mentioned here. Basically, things were going badly for Noah and faithful followers of God. There was an open rebellion against God, and only a few faithful members of Shem's descendants stayed faithful to God. So when Noah says that Yahweh is the God of Shem here, this is very significant at this point in the rebellion against God. But the thing we have to mention here in this end-of-life blessing is what Noah says to his other son Japheth. May God enlarge Japheth, and may he dwell in the tents of Shem. Now, knowing that Yahweh was the God of Shem, and Noah's prayer included Japheth to dwell in the tents of Shem are both significant, because that means that Japheth and his family had fallen away from following Yahweh. We can also show that the time frame of Noah's blessing to his sons occurred around the same time frame as the Tower of Babel. And when the Tower of Babel was dispersed by God, he scattered the descendants of Noah's sons to the lands around the Middle East. We know that Canaan went to the land of Canaan. Ham's family went to Africa. Shem's family stayed around Babylon and Mesopotamia. And Japheth's family went north and west. But let's enlarge this map so we can focus on Japheth's land, and then show the prayer of Noah here. May God enlarge Japheth, and may he dwell in the tents of Shem. So this prayer from Noah is answered by God, because the descendant line of Shem gets us from Abraham and through to the Jewish people of Israel. And one of the Jewish people from the line of Shem was the Apostle Paul. And if you overlay the journeys of Paul, who was a good Jew from the line of Shem to evangelize the Gentiles, we see that his journeys went through the lands of Japheth. So the Apostle Paul becomes the answer to the prayer of Noah. Cool, huh? But our God wasn't done with this prayer. He went to the next level. This is going to be awesome. Let's show that prayer again from Noah. So if Paul was the answer to Noah's prayer, then we can also find out a cool detail of Paul's life in chapter 18 in the book of Acts. After these things, Paul departed from Athens and went to Corinth, and he found a certain Jew named Aquila, born in Pontus, who had recently come from Italy with his wife Priscilla, because Claudius had commanded all the Jews to depart from Rome, and he came to them. So, because he was of the same trade, he stayed with them and worked, for by occupation they were tent makers. Wow, this is incredible! Even Paul's occupation answers the prayer of Noah. And as we come back to show it on the map, we can see how Paul was a tent maker from the descendant line of Shem, so that Japheth could dwell in the tents of Shem. Amazing! Genesis was written approximately 1,500 years before the time of Paul. 
Now, can you tell me there isn't a God and he isn't behind these things? God is real and he's connecting all the dots. And this is how the Apostle Paul became the answer to the prayer of Noah. May we all dwell in the tents of Shem, made by the tent maker Paul, the apostle to the Gentiles who evangelized about Jesus throughout the lands of Japheth. I hope you enjoyed this video and may God bless you all.